Hello everybody, happy Saturday. Hopefully everybody is having a wonderful weekend. You love Saturday, me too. Um, I thought I'd start, hi pumpkin. I thought I'd start real quick with showing you guys um, what I got from the store this morning because I hadn't done a shopping haul in a while. And so I thought I'd start with that. <laughs> so here's what I got this morning. All right, I thought I'd show a quick grocery haul because we have not done one of these in a while and I have a big enough order to do one. <laughs> So I got some shredded lettuce. Um, I love to put that in wraps, tacos, bean burritos. It's just an easy, ready to grab and go. A big bag of spinach, a spinach and spring mix, and then just a spring mix. Some red delicious apples, Roma tomatoes, two limes, two lemons, apple slices peeled just because they're ready to go green onions, a can of cinnamon rolls, some grapes and blueberries, raspberries and blackberries, frozen edamame. I got two soy milks, one two liter of Coke. <laughs> the family does like to have a Coke. Um, shredded hash browns. I like these because there's nothing but potatoes in the ingredients. And along with this, they're just diced up differently. They're great to just throw in the air fryer. Two bags of broccoli florets, grape tomatoes, broccoli cauliflower medley, some spicy kimchi. This is so good. Kate and I eat that, Jake, all the time. Uh, about 10 bananas. And then I have to turn around over here <laughs> as I did this in my kitchen. I got some tortillas, small ones for soft tacos and bigger ones for burritos because we're going to make up a big mess of beans today. Some cheese puff popcorn they just they like that with their sandwiches at lunchtime when we do sandwiches some bread just one loaf because the kids are going to go the girls older ones for a few days to my mother's two cinnamon raisin bagels um just different ones and one plain bagels the kids are loving bagels for breakfast right now uh so they'll just grab those donuts for a treat this simple Simply apple, apple juice. Theo absolutely loves that. Coffee creamer for Brooke and Ronnie and Katie. They all love that. Dry shampoo for me. And then some hair accessories as well. And here is my total. And what you didn't see that I always get a ton of is cucumbers because we have all of these from our garden that we need to eat up. Of course, some kind of grew on the ledge <laughs> of the box. So they're kind of curled up. That's all right, it makes them special. You know, they're homegrown. So we have plenty of cucumbers, which we always buy a ton of cucumbers. All right, and the total for that was $133.42. So now <laughs> I am out here and Charles is re-screening screens. So I will show you some of that. We just thought it would be the right thing to do. Um, they had holes all over in them. So you thought it'd be the right thing to do. So I will show you guys a little bit of I that. I definitely have some worse than others. Some are actually good, but some I could put my fist through them. So. Oh, that's not good. No. And I love to have screens up, so we'll probably even use them before we move. So. And hopefully today, you guys, we hear something. We're gonna let you guys know as soon as we do. We're just now, waiting. I guess I should also say that before I rescreen them, what I'm doing is cleaning them, and then I gotta spray paint them to touch them up because these are just weathered for like 20 years, 20 plus years. So clean them, spray paint them, then rescreen them, then put them up. So I don't know how many I'll actually get done today because I've been at this for almost an hour and I think I've got three <laughs> on number four. And then I still have to spray paint them and then put them back together again, so. You'll get it done. It'll, I guess we got three weeks, right? He's a magic man, he'll get it done. All right, so here's a look at him doing some of the screening. As 
told you guys we would tell you when we hear something we did hear last night but first let me show you some of these before and afters he is not done with the screens yet mm -mm. but they look so much better he'll finish it up today all right so here you guys can see this is the after where he spray painted it the new screens in <laughs> and here is the before with you can see probably maybe some of the holes all in it. It's all, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's just all it's like dirty. dirty and worn, chipped. Worn, chipped. That's kind of a before and after. It looks so much better after. I don't know if they can really see that on camera or not. Trust us. I can see a huge Trust difference. Trust us. They're beautiful. <laughs> they are. They're so much better. No holes. Right. We're running out of screen. Yeah, I got enough screen to do one, maybe two more. And that's yeah. it. And that was a six foot wide by 25 foot long roll. So one of it is that I already rescreened this, which is the insert for the front door, which we don't use because inevitably if I put this in, some child's going to go huh. running for the door and go right yes. through the screen. So yes, yes, we yes. leave the glass in, even though it gets super hot. But... This is done. That used up a lot. And then we did hear about the home inspection. For yeah. the most part, it was really good. They did have our radon was high in the basement. Yeah. So that we got to get that taken care of. Uh, which, by the way, I didn't tell you, but I've already put in Home Advisor for requests for two places to call and give us quotes. Or mm -hmm. come and give us quotes. So Perfect. we'll see what that's going to be. So regardless of what happens, we need to get that done. And then they had a list of 13 things. And we agreed to, what, seven of them? Yeah, we it just was... left a handful of things that we said no. Um, a couple things we said no to were things like replacing window panes. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> and it was actually humorous because I went and checked one of the window panes they said had a broken seal. and Because they said it was fogged. And I just cleaned the outside of the glass with some Windex. And the window was crystal clear. So I'm not really sure how well that home inspector checked them. But, but just saying. Aside from that, you got to go this way. I think a little bit. The light is messing up. Well, here, I'll show you Aside something. Aside from that, we had a really good we home did. inspection. I'll show them something simple that they wanted. Okay. And there were a couple other little things that we said, yes, of course, we can take care of that. Because it doesn't even cost us any money. Right, it's just package. Charles doing stuff. Uh, the kids, one of Jake's birthday presents from the kids, I'm sure. Yep. So one of the other things they wanted done is I use this outdoor outlet every year for Christmas lights and it's got a, a GFCI with a breaker in it and according to the inspector he couldn't get the breaker in it to trip so he wants that outlet replaced. And there was another outlet in the kitchen and we said okay to that. Well what he wanted in the kitchen is every electric outlet over the counter on the other side of the kitchen from the faucet so not next to the faucet but on the other side of the kitchen he said every outlet should have a gfci in it and it's like no which if you are like me and are like huh that's the little outlet that in the middle has the reset the button breakers on them yep the ground fault trips so that's what but those are so that you can reset one, there's it there's like four on that th there's three i think there's three on that side of the counter that sit yeah there's about three. 
three and a half, four feet apart, and he wants one in every one. And I'm like, yeah, I'll put one in the primary, but probably not one in every one because they don't really even have to be there. Code in our area says they've got to be a certain distance from water, and there's no water on that side of the kitchen. But I'll give them one just to make them happy. And those are like, would you say, like, it's 25 like 20 bucks? Something like somewhere that. Somewhere in there, 20, 25 bucks a piece. So, and we already have one, so we might have to buy yeah. one. But then to get the radon fix, it's going to cost us anywhere from 800 to 1500 dollars. Uh, yeah. is what we're seeing um, but regardless that needs to be done even if we end up having to stay so my big thing with radon stuff and we could show you what's on the neighbor's house but what they do with the radon is they actually take and they put your um, plastic PVC pipe coming out of your house and they run it over the height of your roof um, on the outside of the house and then there's a big bulb which is the fan to suck everything out and they are god-awful ugly so I am hoping they still do things like our neighbor's house where he, he has a radon removal, but he doesn't have that big ugly pipe because he's got an open stove pipe that they can use. And we have the same thing now inside since our hot water heater and our, our gas furnace now vent through electric pipes out the side or, or air pipes out the side. Hopefully they can use the existing vent pipe and not put something god awful ugly on the outside of the house. If, if not for us, at least for the new homeowners, but we'll see what they say. Right. A couple other things they wanted that we said no to was more insulation into our um, attic. attic. Yep. They said it was anywhere from eight to 10 inches on average up in the attic now. And that, that uh, recommendation 12. is 12. And it's like, well, if they want additional, they can put additional insulation in. But that what we have is very common for our age yeah. of house. It's not like it, it was anything wrong with it. And then the other thing is up on our chimney, up, up at the up top, there's like a hairline fracture or hairline crack and um they wanted the top of the flue painted um because it i guess from the air from the you know aerial view you can see it's kind of rusted looking yeah. and we said no i mean they can have that stuff done themselves and um, the home inspector was not able to get our fireplace working which is odd that a home inspector doesn't know to go to the basement and turn the gas on but we showed him, yes, yeah. it works, and the auger was out. Well, when Luke was little, he would get in the fireplace. That's why it was, like, um, sealed. <laughs> we had it, like, baby-proof. And he probably knocked it off. We don't ever use it. Um, no, so, so what that one was... We just had to put it back in. There's a, there's a turn knob on the front of your fireplace. When you turn it, it turns a screw on the inside. And when it turns that screw, it pulls a lever and opens up the flue. Well, what happened was... Apparently there's a set screw that holds that rod tight on the screw part and it came out and one of the kids pulled the rod all the way out and the big metal screw that's in there for the which is the auger fell into the bottom of the fireplace and it was just laying down there but the inspector didn't see it laying down in there so his big comment was it's defective the the auger is missing and it's like okay have it professionally installed, have it professionally installed. <laughs> so i put the auger up there i put the rod back through the I auger it in. <laughs> put a set screw in it again and voila it's fixed am and i a professional no but it's not rocket science to put it back together when all the parts are just laying in the bottom because they fell off Right, and I'm trying not to cut you off. It's all but right. they also said that um, that there was no gas to it, that it just yes. wasn't working because you have to go to the basement to turn the gas on because he doesn't leave the gas just run no. if we're not using the fireplace. No. So you had to go down, and so he took picture of the fireplace working, sent it to our realtor to send to them, a picture of the gas, where to turn it on in the basement, sent that to them because they wanted the fireplace working. Well, it is working. So... Yeah. So upstairs, there's a little floor uh, knob with a key that goes in it to basically turn on the gas to your fireplace. And then there's the shutoff valve under the floor. And I keep both of those in the off position because I'm afraid if I leave the one on the floor down, a kid might find the key and go, ooh, what does this do? And turn open the gas. And so I just keep it shut off. Mm -hmm. but... And then they also had requested to have all the screens put back in, which we were already in the process yeah. of rescreening and doing. They didn't even ask for it to be rescreened. We just couple. knew. They're in. Yeah, you can see a couple of them right here. We just knew that it needed to be done. It was the right thing to do because they had holes all over in them, um, which is why they were taken down to begin with when they yeah. looked at the house. And I can't think. I think They're... that's the only things we said no to. And we yeah. agreed to all the little 
nitpicky kind of things. Yeah, most of them anyway. I mean, there were some things on there that were nitpicky that he didn't even mention, but it's, you know, there's stuff, oh, the humidifier down in the basement. They couldn't get the humidifier working, but in his comments, he goes, that's not uncommon in the summer that we can't verify the humidifiers work. Well, it's right. in the basement next to the air conditioning system, which drains into the floor, which drives up the humidity. So no, when they go and turn it on, if they don't turn on the furnace part and crank the humidity on the humidifier up ridiculously high, it's not gonna kick on. So plus they had to turn on the water valve. So I'm not surprised they couldn't get it to work. They wanted us to have it professionally repaired and we said no because I don't believe it's broken. It's just turned off to the point where it's not going to kick on in the summertime. So it wasn't, he's got it marked as defective, but yet in his comments he's saying, it's not uncommon, we can't test it. So it's really not even defective. It's one of those just need to look at issues. Oh, and the other thing that he asked for, or they asked for that we said no, was the water barrier in the carpet downstairs. The carpet yeah, that we just put in. this one's rocket science to me, folks. So when I put that carpet down in the basement, I bought the self-stick adhesive squares. Um, and they weren't expensive ones, but they've got a 15-year warranty, so they're not the cheapest in the world. But I put those down right over the bare concrete because that's what they do. They're self-stick. They go straight down on top of the concrete. His recommendation, and so the homeowners asked for it, was for me to put down a vapor barrier under the carpet to mitigate moisture. And I'm kind of scratching my head on that one because if I put a vapor barrier down... The um, carpet the, can't stick. The tiles might stick to the vapor barrier, but the vapor barrier is not going to stick to the floor and it's just going to flop right up whenever they vacuum or do whatever. So I don't know that that one was fully thought through. Now, I will say, if you've seen any of the previous videos and you see the vinyl flooring I put down there, which is like the, the grip strip flooring, that has a vapor barrier under it because it's a floating floor. But Right, so yeah. I was going to say real quick, so what the vapor barrier is, if anybody doesn't know, it's the blue stuff if you watched our, our doing the house makeover. It's the little thin blue layer that goes between the floor and yeah. the new floor. And so if you have a sticker that you're sticking to a floor, you can't stick it to that plastic because that's not going to work because it doesn't go through it. Yeah, it might stick to the plastic, but it's the not plastic's a floating not gonna floor. stay stuck to the floor. Right, because it's not a floating floor. Like right. the other ones that all lock together, they're a floating floor. This is a self-stick floor, um, carpet tiles. And we also left a box of carpet tiles and put in there that we were leaving that in case we like that idea because if the kids spill something or something happens, one gets tore up, you just rip up that carpet tile and put a new one down. So we still have spare carpet tiles, yeah. a whole box of them, that we were leaving to replace any but the you know, only, issues that they had. But the only way I could foresee them do it, which I had to also chuckle, because they don't tell you to put a vapor barrier on your exposed concrete, which the whole whole unfinished part's exposed concrete on the floor. So there's no vapor barrier on that anyway. But you know, I, the only thing I can think of is is peel up every carpet tile and, and do some sort of a, a paint sealer on the floor and then put that back down to do a vapor barrier. But I'm not gonna go through that expense because it'll ruin most of the carpet tiles once I peel them up, so. But overall, overall. that's all they found in the home inspection. Although <laughs> we did not have much faith in this home inspector that was here because mm. he wasn't even here very long that we could tell. And I don't know. It didn't look like he really got into everything well, that he should have got into. There was stuff he said he couldn't inspect. Like he opened up the lid to the attic, but he said he couldn't inspect the attic. But he didn't even try and go in through but the garage, in. which yeah. is a huge pull down ladder that we go, we store stuff up there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I went back through that report this morning and there was nothing in there that said, in all the garage stuff, there was nothing in there that said he checked the attic in the garage, even though it's clear there's two entries to the attic up there. One's blocked, but the other one's the stairs. Yeah, that just doesn't make much sense. Not that he would have found anything wrong, but that's beside the point. He didn't check it for the homeowners. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. So, that is where we are right now. So, I thought we'd share that with you guys. And then, um, when we come back on our next video, we will share with you. They, we have until tomorrow to have all of this settled. It was three-day negotiation period. So, now what happens, and we're eagerly awaiting, is they will come back and say yay or nay. And, or say maybe they want something they're not gonna live without. We gotta decide if we're willing to do that or not. Um, and then 
that will determine if we're going to move or not. Yeah. This is this is it. So if this doesn't go through, then we will be here until spring. If this does go through, then we will be moving in three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I mean, I think what it, where we are. I think when we talked about it, what it really is going to boil down to probably is the windows and the door which you could clearly see that the door's got fogging in it. I mean, there's no way someone looked at the house. And Those didn't are, we're see not that. willing to do. But yeah. at the end of the day, yes, we understand that it, there's some thermal efficiency when a seal is broken like that, but it's 99% just cosmetic. And, you know, we're not going to put you know, a few thousand dollars into replacing the door because to do the side that's got the broken seal is the non-movable part, which means the whole door has to get replaced. I'm not gonna do two to $5,000 to replace that, plus whatever it is to replace any specific window that may have a minor seal leak in it. And the windows, with the exception of one, are like at best minor, super minor. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's cosmetic. And you know, that's why we came down in the price in the first place when we, agreed to the so yeah that's where we stand on it anyway but we'll see what it comes down to with them right so that's where we are right now that explaining all that to you should take this video to be uh on the longer side so we yeah. will get back with you guys i know you're eagerly awaiting to know what we're doing too unless she uses her magical editing skills <laughs> yeah no because then they'll miss what, what was actually asked of us so that's where we are right now and then like i said later through the day today we should find out hopefully hear something from them and then by tomorrow it's all settled said and done what's going to happen is going to happen we're kind of very tired of living in limbo and we're ready to just know yeah. are we moving or are we not moving <laughs> because that's just it's getting old now and we're just ready to be if we stay, we're fine. We're not gonna like have a hissy fit. We wanna move, but you know, we're not gonna cry about it. It just means it wasn't meant to be and that in the spring we'll find something else. But our fingers are crossed. We are hoping that all goes well and we can move. Yeah. But it's not a bad place if we have to stay. So we're just, we gotta just roll with it now. It's out of our hands. Yep. So. At least we know exactly where we stand with this place if we don't put it up for sale right now. Right. So, All right. I shrug so, my shoulders a lot in this video. <laughs> we will see you guys then on the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next Bye, one. Bye, everybody.